So as you guys can see on the right, I wrote a program using JavaScript which can animate a dot or an object so that it moves in a circle. If you guys are into animations and you want to know how to make one of these, then keep watching. What I'm going to do first is show you the maths behind this, which is basically just a circle equation. And then I'll show you seven different animations you can make based on the circle equation. Right now, this object is moving in a circle that is centered in the middle of this canvas. The canvas is 800 by 800. So the center of this will be around 400 by 400. And the radius of the circle is 100 units out from the center. So imagine a circle with a center at 400 comma 400 and a radius of 100. The circle equation for this would be x minus 400 squared plus y minus 400 squared equals 100 squared. If you imagine the circle being made up by a very large number of points closely knitted together, and let's say any of these points can be represented by x comma y. And depending on the angle you rotate around the circle, the position of that coordinate would change. The angle can be represented using theta and calculated using the Pythagorean identity. Cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. If I were to multiply everything here by 100 squared and group them up based on their powers, this would become comparable to the circle equation. So we could say x minus 400 equals to 100 cos theta and y minus 400 equals to 100 sine theta. Rearrange these and we now have our x and y values in terms of the angle theta. For the purposes of coding, I generalized this to formulas, but basically the values are 400 and 100. So I took those formulas and placed it into these two lines over here to calculate the x and y values, which then drives the location or the position of the point that I'm trying to plot. And as long as I keep changing theta's value by a certain angle amount, it will keep updating and relocating or repositioning where this point on the right side would be. But since it's just an angle, it'll make it go around in circles. And so as a result of that, the object simply moves in a circular path, creating a circular animation. And I've written a few different animations here. So if you guys want to have a play with it, all you need to do is select everything that you want to switch off and comment it out by holding down control and forward slash, and then selecting the next animation section, holding down control and forward slash again, to switch it on. So if I stop the animation right now and play it again, it will be for multiple dots. In this version of the program, I made it such that you can plot 10 or more dots if you want. So if I press play, now we can see 10 dots going in the same circular animation. And I can change the number of points. I can make it less if I want, like this, for example. Or I can put a lot more, like 20 dots. And you don't want to put too many because then it'll just start to look convoluted. But the idea is that if you did do like 100 dots here, then you would end up seeing something that's almost like a circle. You can even change the size of the dots using the stroke weight. So if I made this 5, you'd get smaller dots. If you wanted to change the speed of this animation, all you need to do is change how fast the angle is changing down here. So it's right now saying pi divided by 100. I think this will be a bit faster if I changed it to pi over 10. Yes, yeah, so that's that's a much faster animation. So if you wanted to slow down the animation, maybe make it pi divided by 200. And what's really cool about this is that it doesn't have to be a dot. You could animate a square that's going around in circles. So if I comment this line out and made a new line down here for drawing a square, we now have a square that's going around in circles. And I can make multiple instances of this by changing one to perhaps five squares. And there we go. That looks pretty cool. And this is only the beginning of what you can do with this sort of thing. So if I were to just comment this out, just switch it off and then switch this second, this third animation on. This is to do with variable radius. And so the points that I had before will now be rotating along different circle sizes. So watch what happens when I play this. So we now have 10 different dots circling or orbiting around 400, 400 along different orbits, different circular parts. The largest possibly being around 380 and the smallest around 30. Oh, and if you wanted, you could also put in the actual orbits so that we can see what kind of path they're orbiting along. But I think if I play this right now, what's going to happen is it's going to fill each circle. So you'll probably just see a big blob on the screen. 
Yeah, okay, <laughs> fair enough. And so, uh, if you don't want to see that big blob, then you need to remove the actual um, fill that's inside the circle. So I'll say no fill. Okay, but this is still going to create a problem because we still can't quite see the, um, the, the dots that are going along the orbit. Yeah, so that's cool. So now we can see the orbits that these points are circling around. Alright, so that's the third animation. That's what happens when you introduce a variable radius. And once again, you can make them squares if you want. And now you have square planets orbiting around something. So let's move on to the fourth one. So this is to do with random direction. It's a concept of where we are just making some of these points or squares or whatever you want to make here go in the opposite direction. All of them are currently rotating in a clockwise rotation. So when I run this, some of them will start to go in a counterclockwise direction. And all I needed to do to make this happen was create an array for the direction itself and then get theta to calculate either mi by minusing or adding that angle every time I needed to rotate in a particular direction. But moving on to the fifth animation, this is one of my favorites because it creates a very artistic style. So for all of you art lovers out there, you might appreciate this a bit more. By creating some sort of alpha filter and drawing a rectangular mask over the entire screen, when I play this, it'll actually create a trail for all the dots here. Now it looks like the thing is almost coming alive even, like some kind of AI computing thing. And once again, this is all just built on the same piece of maths, the X and Y that we talked about before. And all I'm doing in each of these animations is adding one extra, one or two extra things that can change randomly, like the direction or the radius or even the shape of the object. But what happens if we added more points? What if we made this a hundred points and change the color scheme? So this is what the sixth animation is. I call it dark mode, the machine. Wow, look at that. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think this is really, really cool to look at. And you guys can make it whatever color you want. It doesn't have to be orange. It could be red, for example. It's a different style. Maybe white. What does white look like? Yeah, white's kind of okay. Could even be a cyan. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. And all I did was change the color to make this work. And change the amount of points. If you put this back down to 10 points, then you won't see much of that effect. So what happens when you get each point to change its radius continually? You get the seventh animation, Spiral Dots, The Portal. Wow. Kinda looks like a black hole or an actual portal. It's really up to your imagination. So this particular animation took a little more work because I had to create an extra function down here for determining when it will hit the boundary of the screen or when it will hit the very center of the screen so that it can change directions to spiral outwards or inwards. But the beauty of this animation is in the way the dots all move independently doing whatever they want to do in their own pathway. So this program is available for you guys to either play around with or make a copy of your own with your own free account on P5. I think it's a great way to learn a bit more about how arrays work and how to create basic animations and learning to work with some vectors. And you can also just have a bit of fun playing around with a color scheme. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you liked it, hit that like button. Click subscribe down below to join the channel and ring the bell so that when the next video comes out, you'll get notified about it. Thanks so much for watching guys. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time.